Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am going to open up some mail, some MTG mail. This is mail from Christoph um, from Germany. And it's quite nice. We started talking through Instagram and we kind of did a revised trade. So I sent some revised cards that way. And he's sending some revised cards back that I'm still looking for. Um, I really like your stamps, Christoph. Sesame Street, sweet. Uh, on top of this, I also have other mail. I also have these, but I'm going to start with Christoph's mail because I'm curious to see what he sent. I know what cards I traded. I'm secretly hoping that maybe he put in a German Timmy. I'm always collecting those Tims, of course. Well, let's see. Oh, there we go. Oh, this looks special. <laughs> so cool. Book of Trades. Forticast. Jam Day Tome, of course, but end of trade. Sacrifice Book of Trades. Look at the cards inside and put them in your binder and gain for life. Christoph, that is pretty sweet. Let me just get the camera that you can see the whole thing. That is really nice. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to take a picture. Okay, so I took a picture and now I'm going to open up this uh, book of trades, Christoph, that you've sent me. Because yes, we did some trading and I'm really happy with those trades. It's just really, really nice to see like how open our community is. Like you post something on Instagram or Twitter and you say, you know, is, is somebody willing to trade? And people just respond and go like, yeah, sure I am. So we're opening the book of trades. And let's see. Okay, oh, we got a letter. Hey, Timmy, thank you for the great work on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. I really appreciate your content and it helped me to get back into old school. I'm really happy to read this because that's one of the main reasons of my channel and why I started all this, just to get people excited for old school, get people back into old school and show that the old school format is not solved or is not as spiky as some people believe it is. You can, you can play old school the way you want to play it, right? And if you find the right people, it can be really fun. Uh, let's take a look. It was a pleasure to trade some cards with you, and I'm glad I could help you with your revised collection. So am I, Chris. Thank you. All the best from Germany, Chris. Dankeschön, Chris. You're helping me on my revised quest, so let's open it up. And here we see the contents of the book. Let's see, what is the best strategy here? Actually done quite nicely. I use a lot more like cell tape and maybe you saw a blink of the cards there. So this is one of them. This is the other one. And I believe uh, one of the things that Chris did, he told me is I'm going to go um, and check at my parents' house. So he's, he went back home to actually look for some of these cards. So I really appreciate it that you went through all that effort. And I believe he found a double ganger that we traded. I just love the Vizuvan double ganger. And this is going to be uh, my last Vizuvan, the last one that I need. Um, so here are the three packs. Mainly, I'm, I'm just expecting revised. And we're just going to open them. Got to be a little careful. He traveled all the way from Germany. Don't want them to get damaged now. He's going to flip them around. Oh, wow. Here we see the German Timmy I was hoping for. Abtruniger Zauberer. Abtruniger Zauberer. Really nice. Black bordered and all. Thank you very much. Really appreciate you adding these to the trade um oh wow i think they're actually oh it's one it's quite thick yeah they're multiple oh you're sending a ghost ship i really like the ghost ship I just love those spooky sails they're just ah oh, they're just gorgeous so we've got a zauberer and we've got ein how do i pronounce this ein geister schiff schiff being ship i assume look at this purple borders did some altering, I guess, on this Zauberer. And okay, cool, Fidelian Soldier. Fallen Empires throw in. I really don't mind. Huge fan of Fallen Empires. And you know what I'm gonna do, because I don't want to damage the corners. 
I'm just going to cut this away. I know, I know, I'm not going to be able to reuse it, but hey, that's part of life. Flip, yeah, this is great, a magnetic mountain. I'm actually still looking, I think this is my second or third magnetic mountain. So it's it's been kind of difficult to get these. They're two red and one to cast for an enchantment. <clears throat> and uh, they read, blue creatures do not untap as normal. During their upkeep phases, players must spend four generic mana for each blue creature they wish to untap. This cost must be paid in addition to any other untap cost a given blue, blue creature may already require. So if you put this, if an island fish just going to get stepped, it's going to cost a lot, a lot to untap it. I can tell you that. It's really funny how they kind of use the effect of paralyze on a red card that's only meant to target blue cards. It's just really sweet, like this old school kind of mentality. It's in really nice shape, by the way. Really sweet. And then we see, it's very good, very good. And then we see an ivory cup. And I actually have four of these, but I wanted to trade one because one of my ivory cups is really in a danged up condition. I might even go and play it sleeveless because I, I have a, a revised sleeveless deck. With just with all already damaged cards, don't worry, coffee stains and stuff like that. But it's just a lot of fun to play. We used to play sleeveless, you know, back in 94. Um, but of course, I'm not going to do that with cards like this. They're just in pristine condition. So I'm really looking forward to put this in my collection. Ivory Cup, one to cast for an artifact. And you can pay one and any white spell cast gives you one life. So also the white spells cast by your opponent possibly. So Ivory Cup. And then we've got this little, oops, little stash of cards. I want to be really... Careful, I don't want to cut it to the magic. And here we go, the Vesuvan Double Ganger. Oh man, that Quentin Hoover art is just stunning. Two blue and three to cast for a summon Double Ganger, and then the magic happens. Upon summoning, Double Ganger acquires all characteristics except color of any one creature in play on either side. Any creature and shamans on the original creature are not copied. So during your upkeep, you can actually switch. You can uh, clone something else. Talking about clone, I remember there used to be decks where people played Enfazu and Doubleganger and clone in the same deck, and they were going to clone their Doubleganger. It was just... Those decks, man, they were crazy. They were crazy. And here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very happy to see this card. Jade Monolith, Forticast Artifact. One, you may take damage done to any creature on yourself instead, but you must take all of it. Source of damage is unchanged. Okay, so this is G8 Monolith and the Demonic Attorney. I think this is Demonic Attorney number four for me. Look at that art. And Demonic Attorney is a card you can only play for anti. Two black and one to cast a sorcery. And if opponent doesn't control the, doesn't concede the game immediately, each player must anti an additional card from the top of his or her library. Remove this card from your deck before playing if you're not playing for anti. So this card is just great. If you imagine you were winning back in the day and you had your anti-card on the table and you're like, well, let's play my Demonic Attorney. Let's see if he wants to take the risk and put another card in anti, you know, or just win the game and move on with my life. Really nice card, really nice art. Thank you very much, Christoph. You have brought me four, and I guess the Ivory Cup, so four and a half steps Closer to finishing my revised quest. Really, really sweet. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to keep this book, man. I like it. Book of Trades. How cool is that? Dankeschön. And we have more mail. And I think this these are just some miscellaneous items. Um, but yeah, why not share it while I'm filming anyway? Um, I'm expecting like a play set of weakness. That's one of the things I want to play it next to my Enchantress. In a new brew that I'm working on. Not sure if that's in here. Oh, wow, wow, wow. This is a fast bond. Amazing. Let's take a look. Can we get the fast bond out? Look at this beautiful card. Wow. 
Wow, stunning, stunning fast bond. And it looks like it seems to be in really, really good condition. This is my fast bond number four. Wow. And fast bond is an enchantment for one green. And you may put as many lands into play as you want each turn. Fast bond does one damage to you for every land beyond the first that you play in a single turn. Wow. Really, really nice. Perfect, so this is bringing my revised collection one step further, that is great. And let's check out, I really didn't expect a fast bond, so I'm gonna check out, maybe I made a trade that I forgot, or maybe I made I made a purchase, I think I made a purchase. Oh man, how bad is my revised, or my magic addiction in general that I don't even remember what I traded or purchased. I need to keep a file, I know like a friend of mine, Richard, if you're watching this, he puts everything in Excel, Maybe I need to start doing that as well because it's just a chaos right now at the moment. But I do know I need this one, so this is fantastic. Have it complete, completed my Fastbond collection. And let's open this up. Here we go. There's also a letter, yeah, this is from Card Market. And I actually think the Fastbond also came from Card Market. I remember ordering it now. Uh, wow, this is quite a stack of cards. Can you see? So let's take a look. Yeah, Dragon Engines. Dragon Engine. I still needed some Dragon Engines. So Dragon Engine number one. Dragon Engine number two. And remember, this is actually a rare in Revised. Nobody knows why they decided to do that, but they did. Three Dragon Engine. That means my Dragon Engine collection is complete. And yeah, I remember this trait. This is a Farmstead. Another farmstead, that's great, because I'm still looking for three farmstead, actually. So I have two now. And Jander's Ring, okay. Again, a card that I still need it. Jander's Saddlebags, lovely horse. Untap a creature. Nice to play with uh, cards like Leviathan, um, you know, cards like Colossus of Sarda. Just cards that cost you a lot to untap. Or cards like Royal Assassin Tracker, so that you can use the same card twice. Or, of course... The Timmy. Maybe I should build a deck with Jander Saddleback and Timmy and Apprentice Wizard. That would be that would be funny. That would okay. That's I'm, I'm just gonna look into that. Um. Oh yeah, Life Chisel. So we've all seen the recent spike of Diamond Valley. Now remember, I'm not a financial channel. I'm not gonna give you any advice on what to buy or what to sell. I'm really not interested in that. But I love to brew decks, right? So. I don't own a Diamond Valley, so I do own one Life Chisel. And then I was reading Life Chisel again. I'm like, you know what? I'm just gonna get two more or three more Life Chisels so that at least I have a play set that if I wanna play it, I have the ability. So Life Chis Chisel is quite an interesting card. It's an artifact, as you can see from Legends. It's four to cast. Look at that art, by the way. Man, that is kinda horrific. Um, Anyway, um, it's, uh, who made it? Anthony Waters. What it does, it sacrifices a creature during your upkeep to gain life equal to the creature's toughness. So it's the same as Diamond Valley, but it's worse because you can only use it in the upkeep. But it has one little uptick, and that is that you can sacrifice as many creatures as you want to. You don't have to sacrifice one creature. You don't have to tap that. So it just says sacrifice a creature during your upkeep. So you can do that multiple times. So... If there is a situation where you need to do that, you can actually do that with Life Chisel, but only in your upkeep. And then we see two more Life Chisels. So that is really sweet. This is a really good day for my revised collection. And we've got one final envelope left. And um, let's take a look what's in here. I think these are probably, oh, this is something else. I was expecting uh, weaknesses, but they're not They're not in here. I think this is something else as well. I don't know what it is though. And this is nice. This is from Roby and uh, yeah, I buy from him regularly. So he's a trader in the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, he's got a really nice card. As you can see, he's a fan of Farmstead. Let me just get that card right here. And I know that he actually wants to organize a tournament called Farmstead with kind of specific rules. 
I mean, don't you just love the art of farm set, by the way? It's just such a beautiful card. Um, okay, let's take a look. I'm really curious to see what this is. I see a little bit of smudging here on the card. Oh, yeah, wall of air. Yes, I'm actually, uh, again, uh, for people... <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on so many deck projects, it's ridiculous. Wall of Air is just still, it's so affordable. Um, Wall of Air, where do I want to go with this? Wall of Air is um, going to be part of a new wall deck project. It's one of the better walls, in my opinion, in old school. Uh, two blue and one for a 1-5 flying wall. I mean, that's pretty solid. And uh, I've made a wall deck in the past. It's called Breaking the Wall. There's probably a link popping up right now, so if you want to see that in action... You can click on the link. It's just a hilarious deck with animate walls. But I'm working on something new. That's all I'm going to say about that. And, ooh, nice. Is this Chinese? Is this Japanese? Let me know in the comments below. Nice. A rat. There's a rat in the kitchen. And let's flip. Yep, and more wall of airs because I think I ordered a nice play set of wall of airs. Thank you very much, Robbie. That was sent like really quickly. I remember ordering that, what, yesterday? Was it yesterday? Anyway, thank you very much. I'm really happy. And just a special shout out to Christoph. This is sweet, man. Book of Trades. I'm going to keep this one. Love the idea. Thank you for the kind letter as well. And uh, yeah, we'll talk We'll talk more on, uh, on Instagram. Maybe we'll also play some games in the future. That would be really sweet. Um, so this was my mail day. If you want to support the channel, um, you can do so by leaving a like, leaving a comment, um, subscribing to Timmy Talks, of course. And what you can also do, look at those beautiful cards. And what you can also do is you can become a Patreon of the channel. And um, you can do that by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now. And then you can support the channel financially. You can join our Discord. You can join Timmy Talks, events, tournaments, all that shenanigans. Um, so if you want to find out more about that, you can click on the info card. And what you can do then as well is become part of the magnificent, amazing kick-ass and scroll of all my channel members and patrons. You know what? Let's go. Let's take a look at the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do with the drunken sailor? Ik het dus, ik het dus, somba kazink.